When you read through the Bible, you'll encounter numerous names. They seem insignificant for the overall story. One could change all the names and the story would remain the same. So no one really focuses on them. But what if the names tell us more about the truth of the story than we realize? The Gospels and Acts contain numerous names of people who allegedly lived in Israel in the first century. Some skeptics have argued that these names could have been made up by late forgers in crafting stories about Jesus. But a new statistical analysis of the names throughout the Gospels and Acts reveals something astonishing. The very names we find do not point to late forgers, but authors who accurately preserved reliable traditions about Jesus. Forgers could not have come up with this naming pattern. Instead, the most likely explanation is that the names in the Gospels and Acts suggest they are reliable accounts of Jesus and name real people who interacted with him. The names of the Gospels are actually a strong indicator that the Gospels are reliable history. In 2001, Talilan published the Lexicon of Jewish Names in Late Antiquity which cataloged the names of approximately 2,500 persons from between 330 BC to 200 AD. Elan collected names from ancient writings, ossuary inscriptions, and other places to provide us with a catalog of all the known ancient Jewish names from during and around the time of Jesus. Richard Bauckham looked at this and saw an opportunity. Elan's lexicon detailed which Jewish names of the time were the most popular and which were the least popular. She also noted Jews living inside of Palestine gravitated towards different names than Jews among the diaspora. Likewise, some names appear more frequently in the Gospels and Acts, and some only appear once. If the Gospels are historical, they should reflect the actual naming patterns of the Jews of Israel from that time, and not the names of the Jews from the diaspora. In other words, the most popular names in the Gospels should be the most popular names for Jews in Palestine from Milan's lexicon. Bauckham's conclusion was remarkable. The ratio of names in the Gospels aligned quite well with the ratio of names in Milan's lexicon. Bauckham concluded, This correspondence is very unlikely to have resulted from addition of names to the traditions, even within Palestinian Jewish Christianity. It could not possibly have resulted from the addition of names to the traditions outside Jewish Palestine, since the pattern of Jewish name usage in the diaspora was very different. But later, Camille Greger and Brian Blaze suggested that Bauckham's argument doesn't work. They argued there aren't enough names in the Gospels and Acts to make a significant comparison, and they also suggest that a forger who had access to Josephus in some early Gospel traditions would have been able to copy some names here, add some authentic Jewish names there, and make a fictional account that looked just like a real one. Thus, Bauckham's test was not all it was thought to be. But recently, Gregor and Blaze's argument has been challenged by Luke Vandeway and Jason Wilson. Their new study demonstrates several methodological issues with Gregor and Blaze's paper, and mathematically demonstrates the names of the persons in the Gospels are an authentic feature that could not have been replicated by a fictionalizing author. While Bauckham's claim that the names in the Gospels and Acts could not possibly have resulted from the addition of names outside of Palestine is difficult to prove, new evidence suggests that we have every reason to believe these names resulted from historical reportage rather than invention. Vandeway and Wilson started with the hypothesis that the name occurrences in the Gospels and Acts would be at least as historical as those of Josephus. Then they went about testing it. First, they sorted the most popular to least popular names from Elan's database for the Jews within Israel and the Jews living in the diaspora, so they could be compared with the names in the Gospels. There weren't as many female names, so they focused on the male names to have a better chance of reaching a statistically meaningful conclusion. Next, Vandeway and Wilson compiled all the named males in the Gospel and Acts and sorted them based on how popular they were in the general population around the time of Jesus. To make a comparison to other samples, they also bend the names of persons from other texts in the same way and compared all these samples to the popularity statistics of the general population around the time of Jesus. The other samples were the named persons from the writings of the Jewish historian Josephus, 
a random sample of Jewish names, a sample of all the named persons from non-canonical gospels and similar material, and last, the names from modern historical novels Ben-Hur and Louise de Wool's The Spear. This last category is important because it reflects what a forger might be able to create with access to names from the Gospels and Josephus. For example, DeWay's novel The Spear is a well-researched historical novel set around the time of Jesus, which incorporates many historical and fictional Palestinian Jewish characters. Lou Wallace, the author of Ben-Hur, claimed that he visited the Library of Congress and researched everything on the shelves relating to the Jews. If the Gospels and Acts are more fiction than truth, were written by late forgers, the naming pattern in them should be similar to what we find in these historical novels. Once the data was collected, Vandaway and Wilson ran a goodness of fit test. This test takes all the popularity data from all the bins in a sample and then compares them to the percentages of the bins in the general population around the time of Jesus. It then considers using an algorithm the likelihood or probability that the sample in its entirety would occur if it were drawn from the general population. It then gives the whole sample a score, the p-value. p stands for probability. In other words, the p-value score tells us what the probability is that we would see a sample like this if it was from the general population around the time of Jesus. The results were astonishing. They found all three fictional samples, including the historical novels, had an infinitesimally small chance of fitting in Jesus' Palestine. In fact, the percentages were so small that they needed to be expressed with a scientific notation. The names of Josephus obtained a p-value that rounded up to 0.07. In other words, if Josephus is historical, then there's a 7% chance his mix of male Jewish names would occur during the time of Jesus. This is a very low probability but still accepted by conventional standards. But the Gospels and Acts scored a p-value of 0.86, meaning if they are historical, then there's an 86% chance their mix of male Jewish names would occur during the time of Jesus. This is a much more likely probability and very plausible. Vandaway and Wilson also applied robustness checks to confirm their analysis which demonstrated the names in the Gospels and Acts appropriately reflected the general population statistics, regardless of how exactly the data is binned. Vandaway and Wilson chose to organize the names into six bins because the rare names belonged to about a sixth of the population, so this distribution was the most even and optimal for the goodness of fit test. Their remarkable findings demonstrated the naming patterns in the Gospels and Acts are completely unlike fictional writings. They contain a naming pattern one would get if they were reporting accurate events of the people from the time of Jesus. Not only that, but they reflect the historical setting even more than the writings of Josephus. Josephus focused a lot on people from the upper tiers of Jewish society. The Gospels and Acts give a better representation of named persons that stretch across every social hierarchy. For comparison, Let's say you were asked to write a novel about the events from the American South 60 years ago. You could not use Google and had limited text you could rely on. You might put a James and a Robert in there, but do you think you could accurately put in the proper percentages of the most popular names from that time? Would you know how many Roberts to put in so it fits with the time period? Would you also remember to include a few rare names like Jerome or Shane? How many slightly less popular names or somewhat popular names should you include? Such a challenge would be nearly impossible to overcome. However, the Gospel authors, in telling the story of Jesus, somehow managed to obtain a naming pattern that accurately reflected the time of Jesus. They successfully included more of the popular names, a slightly lower number of somewhat popular names, and the appropriate percentages of less popular and rare names. Additionally, the Gospels matched the names of Jews within Palestine and did not align with the names of the Jews living in the Diaspora. Not only did they get the ratio of names of the period correct, but they also managed to not mix them up with the popular names of Jews living outside of Palestine, while fiction writers could not even match with either set. Therefore, the names in the Gospels are like an incredibly subtle watermark of authenticity, something no forger could recreate. They do not align with ancient fictional accounts, 
nor with well-researched modern historical novels that copied many names straight from historical documents. They reflect the real naming pattern from the time of Jesus, and even more so than the writings of Josephus. Thus, the evidence confirms Vandeweghe and Wilson's research hypothesis. This is not what we would expect if the Gospels came from forgers, or resulted from a telephone game passed along by anonymous community members. Instead, the Gospels and Acts, like the writings of Josephus, likely retain accurate name statistics as a result of the preferred practices of ancient historians writing about recent events. Close participation, investigation, and the interviewing of eyewitnesses, eyewitnesses whose names were remembered in oral traditions that they shaped and transmitted, which resulted in our Gospels. For the precise technical discussion on this new evidence, Follow the link in the video description to Vandeweghe and Wilson's peer-reviewed article. It contains all the technical data, methods, results, and a detailed response to Gregor and Blaze's critique of Richard Bauckham. In the words of Bauckham, all the evidence indicates the general authenticity of the personal names in the Gospels.